assalamu alaikum dear students today we are going to talk about classification so what is classification outlines of today's lecture are uh, downward classification so first we will discuss downward classification with example and then we will discuss upward classification with example uh, what will be uh, the lecture outcomes? What will be the outcomes for today's lecture? So after watching and listening to these lectures, students will know about the concept of classification and taxonomy. Also the types of classification like upward classification, what is upward classification, what is downward classification and taxonomy. So you will know about the concept of classification, then its types and taxonomy, which is very important. So first uh, we will define uh, classification. So classification can be defined as the arrangement of organisms into groups and subgroups on the basis of similarities or differences. So this is actually called classification. And uh, you know, uh, we d do this, uh, we practice classification uh, everywhere in like e even in our own uh, home in our kitchen like for example in our own kitchen we classify the things uh, according to their use for example you uh, put all teaspoons uh, at one rack then you place all the tablespoons in another rack you place all the cups for tea which is uh, actually the use is for tea so that's why you place them uh, like uh, with each other an isolated rake and you place glasses you know, which are used for drinking water so you place them in another rake so you do not do like we do not, we do not mix the things like the spoons and the, uh, the the glasses and the cups they are not mixed so they are placed isolated uh, for uh, ease of access like we can easily access them uh, when we classify them when we place them isolated so classification uh, the purpose of classification is actually uh, the ease of access for example there are a lot of uh, animals a lot of plants so a numerous number of uh, bacteria are there so when we classify them we can reach them very easily so actually classification is the practice of organism like classifying organism into groups and then into subgroups for the ease of access on the basis of similarities and differences so if they are similar they are uh, placed in one group and if uh, and if they are different from that group we uh, place the other in another group for example if certain uh, species have similar characteristics we place them in one group and other species which have uh, similar characteristics so we place them in another group and why they we are placing them in different groups because they have different characteristics and why we keep Keep them in one group because they have similar characteristics so now depending on uh, the basis of history of classification classification is of two types like for example downward classification and then the next one is upward classification so uh, both are uh, like a bit alike but uh, the, the practice the approach is a bit different like for example in what we do in downward classification so uh, definition of the downward classification uh, it is actually based on principles of logical divisions uh, how like in which it is a type of classification in which subordinate groups is splitted into subordinate groups either two or more than two mean uh, there is a large group subordinate group a large group which have too many organisms or too many uh, plants or too many animals are there we split them into subgroups into smaller the huge group into smaller groups uh, like for example if there is uh, too much diversity in the group uh, so uh, the, the subordinate group will be more in number and if there is not much diversity in a super group so there will be uh, like uh, a few uh, uh, subgroups or sub subordinate groups and that uh, subordinate subordinate uh, group uh, like for example what we do here we uh, classify we divide phylum into classes and then classes into orders 
and orders into genera and so on and so on. Like for example, let's take an example. Uh, it is not a real example. We will just uh, dig, uh, dig a dummy example. For example, uh, there is a phylum. Um, you name it, name it, whatever it's name it. For example, it's a phylum uh, X Y Z. Okay, and then uh, uh, like you divide this super or the huge one a group into smaller groups like you divide the phylum into classes like class a class b class c class d now the class a have these the, 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 the organism inside this class have similar characteristics the organism inside this class has similar characteristics and so on and so on for example if you have this phylum uh, core data let's suppose for example core data coordinates are all those which have that uh, vertebral column okay we'll take it very simple now we divide into classes five classes like uh, Pisces the fishes so class one let's suppose for example this class one is of fishes okay so this is uh, fishes so fishes they have similar characteristic that's why they are placed in one group then another group like for example amphibians so all amphibians they have similar characteristics so they are placed in another group then class reptiles and then class aves and then class mammalia okay then if uh, uh, then we divide the classes into um, uh, like uh, uh, orders because uh, uh, class is again a very huge group a very large group a very diverse group so we then divide this uh, like this subordinate uh, group into uh, subordinate like for example class a is divided into so now uh, forget about the class b c and d we are talking about the class a so phylum xyz was divided into classes a p c d then but i forgot about these three classes and just uh, talk about the class a so we will cla now cla class a will be divided into orders w x y z and then forgot about the x y and z just talk about the order w so order w will be again divided into subordinate classes or groups like families and the family e family f family g and family h and then again forgot about these just talk about the family e so the family e is again a very huge group so we'll divide it or into again into subordinate uh, uh, groups and it will be genera so genus 1 i ge sorry genus i genus j genus k and genus l or so then again you forgot about these uh, three genres just think about the genus i so again we divide the genus because it's again a very huge group so we divide it into species group so species m species n species o and species so this is actually the downward classification where we uh, split the sub or superordinate the huge group into subordinate into the smaller groups and so on and so on so this is actually the downward classification uh, a downward classification uh, uh, was like practiced by many uh, scientists and uh, very early uh, time very primitive and a very primitive time like for example animals were divided into blood dead animals and bloodless animals so now those animals which have blood and those uh, animals which do not have blood you know the uh, invertebrates they have hemolymph so it's kind of blood but there's not a blood not a red blood so blooded animals and bloodless animals and then again the blooded were divided into hairy and hairless for example uh, birds they don't have uh, like uh, hairs and hairy the animals uh, the mammals they have uh, hairs so subordinate were divided into subordinate and then again the subordinate were divided into subordinate so animals into blooded and bloodless and blooded into hairy and hairless so these were actually on logical uh, these were these this division was on the logical basis at the time of aristotle and uh, some other scientists so uh, this was actually basically the idea of aristotle and scientists like uh, carlos nice and andrea cisalvino so these were the these were the scientists uh, uh, who had this idea of uh, downward classification 
now uh, let's talk about the upward classification and actually in practice we practice upward classification not the downward classification it was very primitive so what is upward classification so by definition it is actually the arrangement of species into groups arrangement of species so we start at the lower level not from the higher level not in the superordinate groups we start from the subordinate uh, at the bottom we start at the bottom we collect species and then we st study their characteristics on the basis of their similarities we place them into one group and then so on and so on and we go up and up and up up and up to file them into kingdom into domain level so H is actually the arrangement of uh, like species into groups by accepting uh, some characteristics which are common. For example, um, uh, like all the canines which have canine teeth are placed in one genus or one group that is known as canis. So uh, the dog, the jackal, the wolf. Uh, these are the, these are placed in one group canis why because they have certain common characteristics and those common characteristics are the presence of the canine teeth so it is actually the arrangement of species into groups by accepting some characteristics which are common um, uh, let's suppose for example you have 10 species a b c d e f g h i j the different colors shows the uh, uh, their differences that they are different from each other so for example we have these 10 species but like let's suppose uh, for example if we say that the first five the first five they have uh, certain characteristics which are coinciding with each other they have some characteristics in common so we will put this into one group and for example if the f g h i and j they are coinciding or they are uh, they are having certain characteristics in common so we will put that them in another group so for example this was a group we put this in species group X and we put this one into species group Z so uh, uh, we accepted uh, what we did we accepted certain similar characteristics and on the basis of those similar characteristics we placed them into groups we we were having these 10 different species but then we, we we looked at it we analyze it and when we found that these first a b c d and e are they are like uh, uh, they have they have some certain uh, they have so certain characteristics which are common in them so we placed them in a group x into one group and then then we we, we also analyzed the another five and f g h i j and we found that they have some characteristics in common they, and we placed them in a group z <coughs> so this was actually the idea of buffon and edinson uh, now for example let's take another example uh, it will be just a logical example not a real example uh, um, in the last we will go for a real example for example we have objects like this triangular shape this is also a triangular shape it's a, a, a spherical shape these the rectangular shapes so we have these star shapes so we have these for example we have these different objects okay now we have these different objects we are not talking about the species the animals we are just talking about objects so on a base based on logical uh, like classification or logical discussion when we look at these uh, structures uh, first thing come into our mind is the differences in them and then certain similarities inside them so for example if uh, I give you the task that uh, just go and uh, classify or place these structures into groups so how you will group them so you will think about certain characteristics which are common in them and you will place them though they are every every structure is different from another this is different from this one different from this one uh, everyone is different from the other one but there are some characteristics if you think about them they are in common for example let's place uh, these uh, objects uh, not species so forget about the species or genera group let's think about let's place these 
uh, objects into groups on the basis of their similarities so what we will do for example we will put these uh, like these star shapes objects in one group because they have like many angles like here, here, here the star like angles so we will place them in one group so we consider this one group then we are going for the other one these two because they have a bit similarities with each other so we place them in another group and then we are going for the rectangular one and we place them in another group and then we are going for the triangular one and we place them in another group and then they were good for the uh, like the spherical one so we place them in another group and then we go for this one uh, these are not uh, circles okay so uh, we place them in another group so they are not circle they are not rectangular they are not triangular they are not star shape they have like a bit different uh, form so we place them in another group so like these were different uh, uh, objects but we placed them like th these were 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 these were 16 objects but we placed them like in 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 so the 16 number was reduced into 6 how on the basis of certain similarities we placed them in similar groups for example again if you want to classify them again and to uh, uh, like um, on the basis of certain more similarities if you want to place them again into like uh, another uh, group if you want to reduce the number so let's place uh, these genera so for example if we consider these as genera they is consider these as species and then we consider these as genera so on the basis of similarities among them we will place them into another group which is known as family so let's uh, uh, divide them again on the basis of their similarities uh, now <coughs> these uh, uh, now look at these these all uh, th they are different from each other although they're different but basically if you look at them they are all like uh, like star shapes all of them so we place them in a very major a very big group and then these are rectangular shapes are placed in another group because they are very different from another and they all the everyone which has like a uh, bit spherical or circular shapes were placed in another group and the triangular are in another group so now the number from 16 reduced to 7 uh, and then into 4 so now and also these groups on the basis of similarities can be placed into orders and then into phyla and then into kingdom and then into domain so this is uh, how we uh, like go for the upward classification now let's take a, a real example from the real life so uh, like for example we have uh, this uh, dog this, it's a wild dog uh, and this is wolf it's not a like domestic dog you can place here a domestic dog but it's a wild dog uh, and this is uh, the, the wolf and this is the jackal so uh, now look at them they are very different from each other this is dog this is wolf this is jackal they are different but we place these three species on the basis of the similarities what are the similarities the presence of the canine teeth we place them into a genus that is known as canis so we place these three species into one group which is known as genus why because on the basis of certain similarities now In another group like lion, tiger, and snow leopard, and cheetah, and domestic cat also. Then, on the basis of uh, 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 certain characteristics, because all of these have like the lion, the tiger, the the snow leopard, the cat, the cheetahs, they have cat-like characteristics. So we place them, and they are known as felines. So we place them in another genus group which is known as panthera so all of these are like grouped into panthera so though lion tiger and snow leopard are different from each other but they on the basis of similarities we place them in one genus that is panthera now the dog the wolf the jackal 
they are placed in a family canidae these were placed into genus canis and this date canis genus is now placed into family canidae and then the cats the tiger the lion the leopard they belong to uh, like the the, the, the genus felis and also to the genus panthera but all of them they all of these these cats tigers lion and leopard they uh, like they have cat like characteristics and they are placed in a family that is known as felidae so canidae panthera in felidae fel, uh, felis so felis panthera and canis these three genuses gen genera are now placed in family the one in family canidae and another in the family felidae again these all of these have some other characteristic in common so what are those characteristic in common these all are uh, like carnivores they feed on flesh so that's why they are placed into order carnivora so what we do we start from the species and on the basis of the similarities we group them into into larger groups like species into genera then genera into families and families into orders and now let's go uh, to the next slide where we will place uh, like for example cats dogs lion wolf tiger they are uh, like carnivora they are in carnivora then cow human whale goat and rabbit now some of them are like herbivores they are not carnivores and some are omnivores uh, like whale and cow and goat and rabbit these uh, the, the rabbit is uh, like herbivore the goat is herbivore the whale is herbivore the cow is herbivore the human is omnivore they are very different from these one but again cats dogs lions wolf tiger monkeys cow a human whale goat rabbit Uh, duck-billed platypus, swine and teeter, and so on and so on. There are many kangaroos. All of them they have certain uh, characteristic in common, which is uh, mammalia. Like they have mammary glands and uh, and they have hairs. So we place them in a class mammalia. So we place these all the 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 herbivores and the carnivores and all of them into one class that is mammalia. And again. then what we do we place these fishes fishes cow human being whale goat rabbit cats dogs lions wolf tigers sparrow parrot eagle hen now look the look at the difference fishes are very different from cow human whale goat tiger and lion sparrow is different very different from these these are birds these are like mammals and these are fishes and then snakes lizards crocodile turtles again they are very different from each other from every one of them and then frogs and toads again very different from human beings from sparrow from everyone but look at the importance they have one very important characteristic in common what is that there is the presence of the vertebral column so we place them into a phylum chordata so we started from the species and we reached to phylum like the species were placed into genera genera were placed into families and families were placed into orders and orders were placed into classes classes were placed into phyla on the basis of similarities and now we will place and can uh, the, 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 these all the the whole animal all include all animals the invertebrate the honey bee okay the amoeba Um, uh, the sponges the salinidrates the worms the nematodes the the the, the scorpions and the, the starfishes so all of them and all the all these are now grouped into a kingdom animalia as a very supreme group a very huge group because they have one uh, they have some characteristic in common they are they are all animals it doesn't matter they are vertebrates or non vertebrates they are mammals they are they are reptiles whatever they are but they are animal they are animals so that's why we place them in animalia and then we place all of uh, such things into a domain which is known as like domain is uh, eukaryota because all of these have eukaryotic cells plants invertebrates vertebrates fungi they all have these eukaryotic cells so then we place them in into eukarya or eukaryota 
thank you so much for uh, watching uh, please if you have any question ask uh, feel free to ask any question thank you so much